all, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about blending uh, cycles baking with the game engine and making something that looks rather nice um, and not worrying about unrealistic um, textures um, when you bring it into the blending engine. Um, so this tutorial was suggested to me by uh, Corey Williams. Um, he basically talked about um, how um, baking can look really nice, but when you're trying to blend it with the game engine using a normal map or a specular map, things like that can get pretty crappy looking. And so I'm going to do my best today um, to show you how to add normal maps, um, specular maps, um, things that will really improve um, your game engine um, without using the shayless texture and still using Cycles Baking and mixing the two um, together. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first of all, today we're going to start with um, Crazy Bump. And what we need to do is create a specular map and a normal map. Now, in a previous tutorial, I've already showed you how to cycle uh, or to bake in cycles. So that uh, tutorial link will be up on the screen now. Um, I believe I also show how to make a normal map with Crazy Bump um, and that as well. But um, it's really simple to also make a specularity map. Crazy Bump is a really good program to use. Um, and it's very helpful um, to make your textures look really nice in the game engine. Um, so all you do is you add the texture of your choice in. Um, you can control some parameters here. This is your normal map. All you have to do is save it out. And simply to add a specularity map, you go over here and save it. Now the difference between a specularity map and a normal map is um, if you think of specularity, you can sort of think of it controlling your glossiness almost when it comes to material. So what I want to show you right now is I've got this scene um, looks pretty bland. Um, right now this is not shadeless. I'll show you what this looks like shadeless. So this is what it looked like um, when I baked the texture out in cycles. It looks really nice um, but as you can tell there's not really interaction any interaction and if we play the game um, the texture looks nice but it looks rather flat. Um, and there's not really much of an environment um, working with it. So um, basically what we're going to do, um, uncheck shadeless, and we'll get back to talking about specular maps. So what a specular map does is we have um, a specular um, type over here in our bar. Uh, right next to diffuse, I'm going to go ahead and make this 100% diffuse um, just to make that look a little bit nicer. But we can control this and you can see how um, more light is shown on the material than not, and I'm going to leave it at 0.2. But if we go over here, I'll show you how to add your specularity map. All you do is you bring it in as an image texture, just like you would in a normal map. Um, and all you go down to is here, is you go down to specular and check color. And I believe you uncheck color if that is checked, and just leave that one. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. You, so if that one is not checked, just or if this one is checked, just uncheck it. Um, go back up here. I'm going to go ahead and enable it. And what you see is basically all that specularity goes away and it actually doesn't but I'll show you what it does by making this a little bit more obvious if we turn the specularity up on here we can see that this patch gets really bright and basically what it does is it takes the darker elements the lighter elements it makes some of them um, to protrude um, and some of them to go lower so some are more affected by specularity than others um, so if we go ahead and play the game um, I actually have a light uh, connected to my camera so you can see that uh, how that's controlled, but you can see this where the tops of the rocks of this texture are being um, controlled with the specular, and um, not the entire image with just a flat specularity um, like you would have. So here's the difference: if we take right now, this is 100% specular. Um, if we take it off, that's what it looks like. Turn on the specularity, that's what it looks like. So that's really helpful um, to control it. And I'm going to go ahead and set my specularity to point. Um, we'll say 0.2. Yeah, 0.2 is a good number. Um, a very light shimmer with the specularity. But uh, that's how that works. Um, another thing we can do is add normal maps. And I've showed you how to do this before. But I want to go over a couple of things just to make sure you can um, blend this and get it to looking the way you want in your game. So we'll just go ahead and check it. And um, I've already done some uh, things with it. Um, all you do to add a normal map is add the image texture. Uh, you'll go down here, uncheck color and check geometry. Now this is controlling how much it's going to affect the geometry. So I'm going to set it to 1. That's what it should set it out for you. Um, and turn that off. Um, but if we click play, it looks really nasty. It looks uh, horrible actually. Um, and this is not 
what kind of a normal map you would want in your game. Um, so there's a couple ways to make this look a lot better. Um, one is we have this image sampling up here. Um, if you check it, um, it'll do this. And this is actually a bug right now. I'm not sure why this happens. Um, and I really, it sort of takes off, takes me off. But uh, you can see uh, it's tangent. There's a couple different other ones. Um, they don't work as well if you check camera you can see that there's almost a glowing halo around where our camera is and it's receiving the normal maps from the camera data we don't want that uh, the world doesn't really work as well you get this really strange looking normal map thing doesn't blend well um, and object is pretty much the same so tangent is the only one that actually works decently well um, you can see there's still some uh, slight issues with it but it um, works best out of all of them and it's just a shame that it has to look like this in your uh, Blender view. Not sure what that is. Hopefully they fix that um, relatively soon. Um, but for now, we'll uncheck it. And um, one thing you can do to uh, really get this to look, we don't want 100% normal because we get this really nasty looking thing. So we can um, say 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is always good. Um, this really depends on what you're looking for. If you really want it to be noticeable, then you would set this higher. I'm going to actually go for a 0.3 that will uh, probably look pretty decent and we can sort of see a little bit of black splotches that look sort of nasty I'm going to turn that down to 0.2 I want to turn this tangent on and take a look at it um, and that's something that's pretty good um, but this is really just a lot of playing around with this and sort of figuring out what works well um, for your texture so um, yeah and that looks pretty good but the thing is, we'll go ahead and check this so we can see. Um, if we go to our shadeless, um, this is what it looks like. It's a lot brighter than our original, and this almost looks dark and damp and boring. Um, and so one way we can liven that up, um, we'll uh, actually turn our tangent back on, um, is add some hemis. Um, now this sunlight right here is blue. Um, now whatever sunlight you are adding in your scene or whatever lights are coming in you would um, do this I have another atmospheric tutorial um, I'll link that right now on the screen if you want to click that this is sort of um, how to use blender games um, lighting system to get some realistic lighting um, but we'll do the same here so we'll add a um, hemi light and I'll do one coming from above um, and one coming from below so we'll go here we'll just go into Z um, Duplicate it, click R to rotate it by 180 degrees. So we have two lights, one shining up, one shining down. Uh, the down one will be the ground surface, which is um, going to be this color, which is a slight brown. Um, we'll go like that and turn it down. And we'll, we're not going to make this very strong because it's really not that bright. Um, not not going to be too much of a factor in this scene. Um, and then the other one is going to be bright blue and so we'll go down to one and we'll look at it now that's really bright um, and like I said this all depends on your um, lighting that you've done in cycles baking in 0.5 so we can sort of get um, that looks decent uh, so if we can compare this to our um, original material without shadeless so let's go here let's see so we're going to take the normal map off because it looks really annoying. <laughs> there we go. Um, so if we compare this to our shadeless, um, there's very little detail that is missed. Um, there's a slight light change. Um, but like I said, it's just going to be a lot of um, fixing and messing around with your scene and getting it the way to, uh, you want it to look. Um, I added a lot of blue here with the Hemi light. So maybe to tone that down, we get us a more flatter looking um, image. But yeah, so that's um, a basic way to blend your um, two things together. Now, another thing Corey Williams asked was, how do I add a realistic looking object in here that could be using the same baked lighting, um, all of that stuff, and still look good? And that is something that <laughs> is very hard to do. Um, I'm going to go over a couple methods. Um, first of all, I'll start with, um, well, we can just look at what 
um, a sphere would actually look like if we just plopped it in right now. So we're going to add a sphere, bring it up. We're going to make it smooth to make it look nice. Um, go in here, click play. Um, now it's messing around because I've got a light um, in my hand. Actually, this is parented, so I'll just uh, turn this off real quick. There we go. Um, we'll give it some physics. We'll make it rigid body. So if we look at it, um, it doesn't look horrible, uh, but there's still something off about it. It's not really um, the same material as the walls would be, um, and it's not. Uh, it doesn't really look that incredibly fancy or great, and it's kind of annoying looking, you know. Um, and this is a problem. Now, I guess you could see there's no sh shadow underneath it. That's also another problem. Um, I have a sun lamp here that I'm going to turn, or I've used when I was baking. And I'm going to turn shadow on. Now, the thing with this is that you can see it's messing with our other baking that we've already created. Oh, sorry. Forgot to turn shade this off. There we go turning shade this off so um, there we go but as you can see this light is clearly messing um, with our cycles baking and it looks um, pretty nasty I mean it's not that uh, that much but it is <laughs> it is um, it's not a soft shadow like cycles makes it um, and you can solve this a couple ways you can you can tweak the bias you can tweak the samples so as you can see with the shadows, we can clip a lot of things. We can do um, a lot of different settings to make this look nice. Um, but it sort of is still a little bit strange looking. And I would say the best way to do this, um, and this is a hard thing to do, would be to um, basically mess with the clip start. So we're going to go a view like this. And um, there's somewhere in the middle. We'll try nine. It's really a lot of tweaking. But you can see we have this shadow that sort of appears and seems to grow. Um, we're going to shave it down the most we can. Um, now this looks OK, but like I said, um, you still have this long shadow that really does not need to be there. Um, and there's a lot of factors that can um, change this. Um, so as you can see, we still have these long shadows that just don't really work um, in our scene. Um, now this is a, a really hard thing and annoying thing to do. Um, but what we can do, um, to sort of fake it and leave this alone, we can take our cube here, we can move it to the second layer, take our sun here, also move it to the second layer. Um, if we click play, you see this uh, this is the ray it was originally, as you can see. Um, and then, so look at our second layer. We just have the cube and the light here. Now, if we select both of them, so we're viewing both of them at the same time, click play, we still have that um, problem. But we can do it so that this is only affecting this layer. So if we click play, you see that there's that little shadow. Boom. So we've got a little shadow on this layer. And that's nice. And that will that'll work decently well. Um, and this is just another method. There's a lot of different ways to do it um, and really make it look nice. Um, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. But as you can see, there are some issues with this problem or issues with this method because uh, this does not have a shadow in it, right? Um, so this is not affecting it. Or what we could do, we could take this layer, move it to the second layer, click P, um, and now you see it's affecting it, which is good. Um, but there's a lot of ways to do it, and you'll have to work around it um, depending on your game. And as far as this object goes to bake it in here, um, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, to bake it so to get it some realistic lighting and that's something that's um, pretty hard to do the only thing I can re really think of is taking this so we'll take this cube we'll move it to the third layer we'll go to cycles 
Now I've already um, baked all of this out with all my uh, properties and things. And so what I'll do is I just use this light and I used a world setting as a sky. Uh, this is pre-thumb, uh, turbility of five, strength of 0.5. Um, and that's the settings I use. So what I would do, if you just want to take an object and basically have its um, everything surrounding it, I would just uh, even not use your lamps, but take your world setting or your environment and uh, just bake it that way. So if we click rendered, we have this view of it. It's this little blue ball. Um, we'll take it away because if we're using the sky texture, it's using that. So what we can do is we can bake this um, just using the sky texture. We'll do that real quick. And we'll be right back. So we're back. Our uh, bake is finished. We're just going to save it. Ball texture bake. Um, and we'll go back to the Blender game engine um, with nothing changed basically. Uh, viewing all our layers, we can move this back to the original layer. Um, and good thing to note, uh, when you're using cycles, um, you'll notice that this annoying uh, node thing is, I would just go ahead and shift click this to delete it completely so it's not annoying you anymore. Um, always the best thing to do. But we'll give it a ma material an image and we'll just use the ball texture bake um, and we can turn this up specularity up and like I said um, this is really the best way I can think of sort of baking your objects is just using the environment you have taking all of the things away and um, doing it that way and it looks um, rather realistic there's a lot of things like we could uh, maybe bump up this sun energy um, that would make it a little bit brighter um, and you can see some looks decent although there are some issues when you roll it over parts of it are going to be blue and parts of it are not um, but you can eh, see this is just a form of doing it um, in some ways you can get um, by with doing it in some ways you can't but yeah, so this is um, a couple ways you can do it. Um, the best way I think I would do it is probably just to use Hemis um, or use um, just some basic lighting. It's going to be really incredibly hard to bake um, an object and make it look nice all around. Um, it's just going to be really difficult to make it look like that. And the best way I can think of is to use some Hemis. Um, but yeah, you can see how this... Um, object is still being influenced um, by shadows um, and stuff like that and um, we're not having too much issue with the uh, cycles baking and all that stuff so hope you guys enjoy this tutorial um, please give me some more likes and some subscribers it's always nice um, thank you for Corey Williams to um, leave that comment um, to inspire today's tutorial um, I hope you guys learn a lot. Please share it um, and do all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.